It's been nine weeks since Natalie Holloway vanished without a trace. Since then, we've heard from family and friends about Natalie's warm and good-natured personality. And tonight, in an on-the-record exclusive, you can see for yourself at least a glimpse of what Natalie Holloway is like. Just, you know, sitting in the back, cruising over to my place, and you're Chilling. doing an excellent job. And I just want to say happy birthday. You know, you look like a new woman, and I'm sure you feel like one, too. And the beach was a blast. I had best time of my life. Two days ago, Natalie's mother left Aruba for the first time since she raced to Aruba after getting that call that her daughter had failed to show up for her flight back to the United States. We caught up with Beth Holloway Twitty and Natalie's stepfather, Jug Twitty, at their Birmingham, Alabama home. When did you get home, Beth? Oh, gosh. Friday what? night. Friday night. Did you come to Jug with yes. her? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, plan isn't to stay home long, though, is it? Not for me. Um, the plan was to get her to bring her home, and and she had so many cards and letters and things down there were just piling up in the in the room, and we knew we had to get some of it back because, you know, um, we would never gotten it all out of there. But uh, and I wanted to come back, and I wanted to see what the community has done for her. You know, when you step outside of Aruba, I think it helps clear your mind, and you see. You see really what you've been going through and, and still what needs to be done and the things that, that are, are so wrong. And I'll be honest, it just really gave me so much strength and I was just really getting, I was, my anger was increasing every hour. It's, it just increases as I'm here and it's because I know of so many things that, you know, I see this huge support here and then I see these things clearer now, these things that have gone wrong in Aruba in regards to Natalie's investigation. And like? it just becomes, oh, everything, everything since day one. And I was just getting angrier by the moment. Uh, I mean, Jug knows. It was just... Do you matter? or Because you've been, no, you've been was, mad a lot I, since the I'm beginning. All, you know, I'm always mad. But um, <laughs> when I came back the first time, uh, I, I was livid. I mean, I just would watch the, the news, Fox, whatever, and... And it just drove me crazy, and I kept hearing these things that people would say down there. And, and uh, then after talking to the people here about and seeing all the support, you just want to go back down there. And so I was down there the next day. I stayed here one night, I think. But I think in bringing Beth back, you know, first of all, we got a lot of the stuff back. I wanted her to come back and see Matt. I wanted her to come back and get Matt settled in. You know, her, your son, her son. Her son mm -hmm. for, uh, for school. And... Um, but also it gave us an opportunity to talk to some of the kids that are Natalie's best friends that were on the trip with her down there. And you know how we had never, they came to my office one day and we talked a little bit, but having Beth back here, Beth is like their best friend. I mean, they're all like, she's like one of the girls, you know, so this afternoon they came over and we sat down and we talked. And we talked about what happened that night, what happened at Carlos and Charlie's, what happened at the Holiday Inn, you know, just the whole story and because we've been talking back and forth on phone or asking questions when the, the you know the FBI wanted us to ask a question or whatever and this was a this just gave her more fuel right there that this happened and this happened and she got the real picture of you know what all happened that night do you do you, are you sort of in a vacuum in Aruba you don't realize a tremendous amount of attention because I mean this has been all over this media mm -hmm. you don't do you not see that in Aruba no, no. No, n not anything like it's been since I've I've come home, and now I see why Jug would be so so upset when he would call me when when he came back to the states, and I was still in an, still in a rib, and I was thinking, in my mind, I was thinking, well, nothing's changed, so I really wasn't any angrier or anything like that, but I noticed his was just increasing, and I couldn't figure it out until yesterday. I see, I see. I see why now. And I don't know if it just helps you get a bigger picture or, you know, you just, if you can step outside of something, you, I think I just saw for the first time how clearly things had gone wrong. You know, I knew they were going wrong, you know, you know that, Greta, but I think I just saw it even clearer. Like what? I mean, what, uh, what, what's just gone there? I think I just saw specific little details that just have started eating me alive, just from... I mean, from details of that first night when we met Yoren and Paul and Deepak, 
you know, just little details that have been eating away at me on this pickup time at McDonald's. You know, this, you know, Paul Vander Sloat stated specifically and emphatically he picked them up at 4 a.m. I have it documented in my journal too many times to know that. 11 a.m. or 11 p.m. No, he told us at 4 a.m. Totally 4 a.m. Yeah. To up, start with. To start with. And then, you know, I noticed when I went, when you and I went to his home, do you know that was the first time that he had ever changed it to 11 p.m.? But before they've been 4 a.m., but then with us it's 11 yes. p.m. 4 a.m. on May 31st, he and I stayed, I documented in my journal that he stated to the police spokesperson that he picked urine up at 4 a.m. Again, on June 17th, I have it documented in my journal that they were going to question Paul that day about the 4 a.m. pickup. And then it changed. That, that, that's why I was so shocked that day that you and I went to his home. That was the first time that he had changed it to 11 p.m. to the 29th. So little, just, that's just one example of many little details that are just, just driving me crazy now that I'm back home. So what's the strategy, Jug? I mean, how, how do we get this case to move forward? I really hope that the new people that are involved, and I did meet um, Eric Sumers down there uh, with a friend of mine, I actually went out to where they were draining the pond and met him. And um, I feel like that, this is my personal feeling, I feel like getting Von der Straten out of the way will allow us to go back and maybe look at some things that happened on that first, second, third day. And everybody knows those first nine days were so critical and, you know, but we, mistakes were made. But they can still go back and get the people that were with me that night. There was eight people that were with Beth and I the night we went to Von der Sloot's house. And, you know, they didn't take their, they didn't take their statements for 19 days. So, but they can still go back and get them. And, you know, people forget things. But if we'd taken them, of course, you know, two or three days later, we'd probably already had the, the answer to what happened to Natalie. But I, I still think that the new people there do want to do that. I think they want to go back to the beginning. And there are so many people that they, need to go back and talk to. Uh, that I think if we do that, s somebody's going to say something or they're going to get some kind of clue as to, to what happened. How do you keep your cool, though? I mean, you seem, you seem patient. Well, I mean, it, last night I don't think I was very patient. I, I don't, you know, just, you know, have my moments where I'm just, I'm just, I'm so angry and I'm just ready to lash out. And, you know, I, I can't just stay that way uh, that's just, it's, you know, I just, I just have my moments. I mean, you know, today, uh, you know, I'm getting, it's getting closer to where I'll depart for Aruba again, so I realize that I will be able to, you know, just further, har I just feel like I just want to further harp on those specific details of everything that we've heard since, since we arrived on that island, because there are so many things that are is it that you're, I mean, when you go back, do you feel like, you, I mean, you're determined, you don't feel like a tremendous amount of, like, I, I, this is so hard, I can't go back? Uh -uh, no. None of that? Mm -mm. No one. I can't wait. I cannot wait. You always been like this? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. She has. Kind of, yeah. Both, and you too, Joe? In a, in a different way, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm like that, yeah. Because I want we, you two we, on my team. <laughs> <laughs> I would want you two on my team on this. She, she's very, very determined. I mean, she's... Uh, She's going to find the answer. I mean, she is not going to quit till she finds it. And we think we know where it is. Know. Well, we know we know where it is. Where I mean, is it? It's, it's in Aruba. It's in, it's, it's in Euron's head. It's in Deepak's head. They were there that night. I'm, I'm telling you, when we drove up, that Euron, Deepak, and the father all know what happened to Natalie. 